Welcome to LAS 258 and Darla Deridoff's Intercultural Competence Model. Uh, the key focus for this uh, lecture is to introduce you to the core concepts intended for the student learning outcomes. Uh, and as a result of learning this uh, model for the uh, intercultural communication, uh, you will be able to listen and describe five different components of intercultural competence, map your own intercultural competence development through the use of Deardolph's intercultural competence model, and uh, a variety of or multiple reflection assignments that you're going to be doing for the semester and demonstrate an understanding of your own cultural awareness and that's going to be through the use of your museum object selection assignment and the uh, virtual museum pamphlet you design with uh, your colleagues from uh, Berlin Germany Successful intercultural interactions are often a primary goal of intercultural training. So what does it mean to interact successfully with those from different cultures? This is going to be important not only for you as a museum curator or working with the compilation of information for museum objects within a museum, but successfully um, making that information available uh, through education to your museum visitors, no matter what culture culture they come from. Uh, so, um, the uh, what does it mean to interact successfully with those from different cultures is a key question underlying the concept of intercultural competence. Darla Deroff's Deardoff's Intercultural Competence, or IC model, can be used as a guide in making one's own intercultural competence development. The model is based on five components, attitude, knowledge, skills, internal outcomes, and external outcomes. You might want to know that. So let's describe and define what each of these five components necessitate. And you can see them listed here, attitude, knowledge, skills. You start here, attitude, knowledge, and skills, uh, desired external outcomes, Oops, desired internal outcomes and then desired external outcomes. So it goes like this. <clears throat> Attitude. <clears throat> so we're starting here. Uh, this means respect, openness, curiosity, and discovery. <clears throat> openness and curiosity imply a willingness to risk and to move beyond one's own comfort zone. In communicating respect to others, it is important to demonstrate that others are valued. These attitudes are foundational to the further development of knowledge and skills needed for intercultural competence. Uh, <clears throat> knowledge, so we're here. Knowledge means cultural self-awareness, meaning that the way one's culture has influenced, influenced one's identity and worldview. Culture-specific knowledge, deep cultural knowledge including understanding of other world views and sociolinguistic awareness. It is important to note that the one element agreed upon by all intercultural scholars is the importance of understanding the world from others' perspectives. This lack of understanding within the museum environment is what has historically led to many museum controversies such as the Rose Art Museum controversy just in January or last month, January 2022, and the Enola Gay exhibition. Skills, so we're right here. This means to observe, listen, evaluate, analyze, interpret, and relating. Intercultural outcomes, or the desired intercultural outcomes, were right here in Deardoff's model. <clears throat> These attitudes, knowledge, and skills ideally lead to an internal outcome that consists of flexibility, adaptability, and ethno-relative perspective and empathy. These are aspects that occur within the individual as a result of the acquired attitudes, knowledge, and skills necessary for intercultural competence. At this point, individuals are able to see from others' perspectives and to respond to them according to the way the other person desires to be treated. Individuals may reach this outcome in varying degrees of success. External outcomes. So desired external outcomes of and the intercultural components of attitude, knowledge, and skills. 
means the summation of the attitudes, knowledge, and skills, as well as the internal outcomes are demonstrated through behavior and communication of the individual, which become the visible outcomes of intercultural competence experienced by others. This then becomes the agreed upon definition of the intercultural scholars that intercultural competence is the effective and appropriate behavior communicated in intercultural situations. However, it is important to understand that this definition is predicated on the elements highlighted here. And we'll define more about what intercultural competence is and break down the definition of intercultural competence in our Bennett reading for next week. Uh, anyway, for Deardorff's model, these five elements can be visualized through the process model of intercultural competence, thereby providing a framework or a map to further guide efforts in developing intercultural competence. Intercultural competence, unfortunately, does not happen for most. Instead, it must be intentionally addressed. Having a framework of intercultural competence, such as Deardorff's, can help guide individuals in mapping their own development toward intercultural competence. Competence in general is defined as knowledge, skills, and attitudes. That's how Deardorff defines competence. So Deardorff and her model defines competence as knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Over five decades of work exist on intercultural competence in the United States. The framework, or RIC model, outlined within this presentation is the first granted research-based framework, and it details the specific elements in those competence areas agreed upon by the leading cultural experts. And this is where um, their Deardorff's reading for this week uh, expands upon this. The IC framework illustrates that intercultural competence is a process. It's a lifelong process, and there is no one point at which an individual becomes completely interculturally competent. Thus, it is important to pay as much attention to the development process of how one acquires the necessary knowledge, skills, and attitudes as to the actual aspect of intercultural competence. Critical reflection becomes a powerful tool in the process of intercultural competence development. Further, a one-time training program is not sufficient for intercultural competence development. <clears throat> intercultural competence doesn't happen in a vacuum, so it is important to be aware of the context in which with this competence is occurring, and if particular, and in particular in the interaction itself, as noted in the framework. Within this class, you will be developing your intercultural competence within an online museum environment, and within this environment, you will be operating within the context of a museum curator when designing your virtual museum brochure with your German counterparts at the end of the semester, or starting in March. Attitudes are at the foundation of intercultural competence development, as noted by the arrow in the upper left box of the process model, of the intercultural competence as a starting point. So here, without openness, respect, which manifests itself differently according to the cultural context and curiosity, it is very difficult to pursue knowledge or skills that are essential to intercultural competence development. One way to move individuals toward these attitudes is by challenging their assumptions, which is what museum professionals can do, can and do, uh, through the exhibits created, both online and on-site, within their respective museum environments. Deardorff's IC framework illustrates that it is possible for an individual to have the requisite attitudes and be minimally effective and appropriate in behavior and communication, even without further knowledge or skills. Adding the necessity, uh, the necessary knowledge and skills may ensure that an individual can be more effective and appropriate in his or her intercultural interactions. With the added flexibility, adaptability, and empathy, one can be even more effective and appropriate in intercultural interactions. What we see and experience with intercultural competence are the external outcomes, behavior and communication that is effective and appropriate. So what we see in intercultural competence or with the intercultural competence training that you're gonna be getting in this class, uh, the external outcomes man are manifested in your behavior and communication that is effective and appropriate. You might want to know that. 
It is important to stress the implications of effective and appropriate behavior and communication. So the implications of effective and appropriate behavior and communication are the effectiveness can be determined by the individual, while the appropriateness can only be determined by the other person with appropriateness being directly related to cultural sensitivity. So let me say that again. Effectiveness can be determined by the individual, that's you, while the appropriateness can only be determined by the other person that you're addressing, with appropriateness being directly related to cultural sensitivity. <clears throat> Note that the only item agreed upon by all experts in the study is found in the knowledge component. Understanding others' world's views, others' world views, and being able to see from other perspectives, hence the creation of our virtual museum brochure at the end of the semester. Now, while the literature within the field of intercultural competence um, addresses one underlying component or the underlying component in that the understanding of other world's views and being able to see from others' perspectives within the knowledge component is the only thing agreed upon by uh, knowledge experts within the field. However, next week, as I've already said, we will attach definitions to uh, culture, intercultural, intercultural competence, what it means to be competent, things of that nature, next week. The five components of Deardoff's framework were agreed upon by leading intercultural experts as absolutely essential to intercultural competence. However, intercultural competence is not limited to only what is found in this framework. This leads to questions such as what is missing in this framework? What elements could be added for a particular context as examples? While this is primarily a U.S.-centric framework of intercultural competence, it is being used by organizations and institutions around the world. And those from other cultures have also found this intercultural competence model or framework useful within non-U.S. contexts. That being said, it is interesting to explore what intercultural competence looks like, looks like from a non-U.S. and non-Western perspectives. It is difficult for any model or framework to capture reality, so there are obvious limitations. The reason for this potential, the reason for this potentially, is that intercultural competence is quite complex, which is why it takes a lifetime to develop. <clears throat> so reflection questions, developing your own intercultural competence. This is important for your intercultural competence survey assignment that you will be doing during the course of the semester. <clears throat> the following reflection questions can be used in continuing to develop your own intercultural competence. How truly am I open to these, um, to those from different cultural, socioeconomic, and religious backgrounds, for example? Um, for attitudes, All right? So another one for attitudes is, do I make quick assumptions about people? Do I prejudge people or situations, or do I withhold judgment while I explore the multifacets of the situation? Another uh, I see component for attitude or the question you can ask is, do I measure students' behavior based on my own culturally conditions, expectations, or do I try to understand a person's behavior based on his or her own culturally conditioned background? This is something I'm always trying to work on. It's a never ending process. Another attitude question that you can ask yourself in terms of reflecting upon how interculturally competent you are is, do I value those from different backgrounds? How do I demonstrate that I value others even when I may disagree with their beliefs and opinions? And another, uh, the final attitudes question that you can ask yourself is, am I eager to learn about different cultures? And specifically, am I eager to learn about individuals' backgrounds and experiences? And do I make an effort to learn more? Hopefully you're in this class and majoring, if at all, uh, within the museum administration field uh, because you want to learn about other cultures. So knowledge. This is component number two of the intercultural competence um, model that Deardoff developed. Questions you can ask to reflect upon the knowledge component are, can I describe my own cultural conditioning? For example, what cultural values affect how I behave and communicate with others? 
What are some of my core beliefs and how have they been culturally influenced? How would I describe my worldview? How would I describe the worldview of different individuals? You're going to be exploring these questions and answers to them when you work with your German counterparts in developing your um, virtual museum project. And how might these differ from the ways in which I see the world? How much do I know about cultural, the cultural backgrounds of other people, such as museum visitors? What information am I missing and how can I get that information? How can I incorporate my audience's worldviews into my teaching materials, such as my museum brochure, my curated exhibit, and or my museum artifacts that make up the exhibit? You're going to be exploring all of these questions, um, starting with the selection of your personal museum object in week one. What worldviews are demonstrated through the museum artifacts, curated exhibits, and the descriptive metadata attached to each of the museum artifacts that make up the exhibit? How can I enhance these materials so that other worldviews are represented? So skills. This is the third, the third component of Deirdre's intercultural competence model. Uh, how much do I really listen to others? Do I engage in active observation within the online classroom, computer applications or apps, and the online uh, and face-to-face -face museum environment? Do I pay attention to subtle, subtle nuances and dynamics among the people I am engaged with in conversation? Do I engage in active reflection on my communicative listening and writing practices? Do I engage in active reflection of my interactions with those from different cultural backgrounds? Do I not only seek to understand why something occurred, but what lessons I learned from the situation? Do I know how to evaluate interactions and situations through an intercultural lens, seeking to understand underlying cultural explanations for what occurred? Internal outcomes, adaptability, flexibility, etc. This is component number four of Deirdre's intercultural competence model. Questions or reflective questions to ask yourself are, do I know how people want to be treated or do I assume that they want to be treated by my cultural standards? Am I able to adapt my behavior and communication style to accommodate learners from different culturally conditioned communication styles? Am I, flex am I able to be flexible in responding to people's learning needs, seeing to understand those needs from their cultural perspectives? Can I easily view knowledge cultural artifacts or a situation or issue from multiple perspectives. And the final cultural communication, intercultural communication component of Deirdre's model is um, external outcomes, communication and behavior. Uh, reflective questions to ask yourself are, how cu culturally appropriate have I been in my interactions with other people? Was I able to meet my goals in an appropriate and effective manner? What can I do differently in the future to be more appropriate and effective in my communication and behavior, both in my interpersonal interactions and in my teaching? So please remember to fill out your survey uh, assignment located in Canvas, and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes, so just hang on really quick. So the reflection survey that I'm going to be asking you to fill out is um, located here, Intercultural Communication Reflective Survey. I'm asking you to fill out a scale um, where one is poor and five is very high. And uh, I'm gonna ask you at the beginning of the semester, at the end of the semester, and I'm asking you the same questions in the uh, middle of the semester during our virtual museum exchange with um, uh, Germany. So these are the questions that I'm asking you to rate yourself on, and I would like you to use the PowerPoint that we just went over to um, assess for yourself how effective you're going to be as a museum curator or even a museum administrator working within the museum environment and um, building or helping to build and create um, descriptions that are attached to each museum object and how you convey those objects within your museum environment within an exhibit both online and on-site uh, to the general public and then here I ask you to do a short answer 
So I hope you found this uh, helpful. And uh, like I said, next week, uh, we will be discussing Bennett. I'll put that chapter up for you momentarily and going over some definitions.